Morning everyone, this is Dave from davestravelpages.com and this is day one of my cycling journey from the Danube to Lake Constance. And I'm starting my journey in Ulm, which is a city in Germany, Germany even. And behind me you can see Ulm Minster. And this is the worst camera shot in the world, but can you see how tall that is? Apparently that is the tallest church spire in the world. And I climbed to the top of that yesterday. And there's about 868 steps or 72 or something. Anyway, it's a lot of steps. Um, so why am I here in Germany? Well, I've been invited to promote cycle tourism in the region and particularly on this route. I think they're celebrating the anniversary. It could be 40 years. I should have done my research before making this video, but I'm fairly certain it's 40 years. And they've given me a higher bike, which is just behind me here, which is, which is okay. You know, it's going to do the job. There's a van going past now, so you probably can't hear me. Let me pause. There we go. So anyway, I'm starting my journey in Ulm and this is the central square in front of the cathedral, as you can see around me. And then I'm going to head kind of southwards and I'm heading south towards Lake Constance, which is actually on three countries and I'm going to head to the German bit. It's a four or five day cycling trek. Uh, it's all been organised for me, so I don't need to worry about accommodation or anything like that. But there is one small drawback. They've not actually given me a map. So uh, apparently it is easy to find your way around. So I think I've got to head to the Danube, turn right, keep pedalling and hopefully there'll be a signpost somewhere. If not, I'm sure Google Maps will come to my rescue. Is there anything else I should add? I don't think so. I'm going to quickly take you around Ulm now and then we're going to hit the Danube Trail, something I've cycled twice now, so this will be my third time cycling this small section. And then at some point that track should then diverge and hit the Lake Constance route. So that's it from me for now. I will talk to you in a bit. Cheers. So as I mentioned, Ulm is definitely a place where you could spend a couple of days sightseeing. There's plenty to see and do here and there's also a surprising amount of museums. I didn't actually get to see as much as I wanted to because I'm on a bit of a schedule, uh, but that said, I've already been here three times, so there's no reason why I can't come back for a fourth. As I left the city, I followed the signposts out from the centre and towards the Danube, which is very easy to find basically, um, and once I was there, it's just a matter of turning right. As I mentioned before, I've cycled the Danube in both directions now, and I would go as far as to say it is the best cycling route in Europe. It's suitable for people of all ages, of all abilities, of all levels of fitness. You can take your own bike, you can hire bikes along the way, you can stay in hotels, you can camp, uh, you can do 20 miles a day or 30 miles, or you could do 100 miles a day. It's really up to you. As you can see, it's also very well signposted and the route takes you through the countryside where it can. The, the route in Germany is sealed for the most part. Hi there, so I'm about half an hour into my journey. Not sure if you can hear me, I'm using the headphones as my speaker again. Let me put, let me put this earphone in again. There we go, you should be able to hear me now. So I'm about half an hour into my journey, uh, 10 kilometers outside of Ulm, and the path so far has followed the River Danube and it keeps you off the road and it's a sealed path. So I'm not sure if you can see just behind me here, but that is a sealed path literally just for cyclists, which is what makes cycling in Germany so great really, because it keeps you away from the traffic. It's also been relatively flat as well. Maybe there's a slight uphill. You can see the bike behind me there. And behind me is the River Danube itself. So I believe if, because I'm kind of using Google Maps, uh, I believe that my path will leave the Danube probably in about five kilometers or 10 kilometers time, and then I start heading south. Uh, that's all I've got to say for now. The weather's a little bit overcast at the minute, so I apologize if it's a little bit shadowy, uh, but it's pretty good for cycling actually. And that's it. So I'll catch you in a bit. Cheers. So I have found the first signpost. At least I think it's the first signpost. So that means cyclist info. And there's kind of a map there in the, in the form of a cyclist. That's the Danube cycle path, which is the Donau Rad van der Weg. I'm really terrible at German pronunciation. It's quite amusing. And this one going down here is the Donau Bodensee, which is where I'm heading to. So looking at the map, it looks like I'm in blue, Donau Bodensee. So I carry on along a little bit and then I go through, well, okay, it's not very clear, but hopefully there'll be a signpost. So it looks like all systems are go and the path I'm following is the Donau Bodensee Ve under der Donau, Rad von der Wey. I really should learn some German or at least try and learn how to pronounce it properly. Anyway, there we go. It looks like I know where I'm going now. So that was fairly easy and I was then on the Donau Bodensee Radway. And the itinerary I was following was laid out for me by Sandra. Thank you very much, Sandra. And let me get this right of the Oberschwaben Algal Tourism Board or Tourism Association, something like that. Anyway, 
Uh, my destin- ultimate destination is Lake Constance, but the destination for the day was actually Biberac. And along the way, uh, I was due to stop at Lautheim, where I was going to do a brewery tour. It didn't go as planned, but I'll explain in a minute. As you can see, cycling through these villages, you get these typically tall German um, farmhouses, and they look absolutely huge. And a couple of days later, I got to go onto a, like a rural farm museum almost, which you'll see in another couple of videos' time. Anyway, the route to follow was very easy. Everything was signposted lovely, and the cycling was just wonderful, really, which is what makes cycling in Germany so great. Hi there, so I've arrived in Lautpheim and I was due to do a brewery tour and you can see the brewery behind me there but I've arrived a bit late because there are a bunch of roadworks on the way and so I've arrived about half an hour late which is a little bit bad and there's no one here at the minute so I can't do the brewery tour uh, me personally I don't drink anyway so uh, there's no real loss there but if you are going to do the cycle tour phone ahead to this brewery here if you can see the uh, the sign and it says Cronen Brewery and uh, book yourself a tour. I'm sure it'll be very interesting. The beer will be tasty. Uh, as for me, I think I'm going to take a little look around the town and then go for lunch. Cheers for now. So after lunch at Ristorante Rosley, I then carried on cycling again to my destination at Biberac. And like I said before, the day cycling was really easy. Um, the sky cleared up a little bit. It was a little bit warm, but no problem. And everything was sealed along the way. Um, there's not a lot to say that I've not said before about cycling in Germany really. Uh, there's a lot of countries that should look to, to what they've done here and perhaps when they think of upgrading cycling infrastructure, uh, think a little bit beyond sort of signposting a Sustrans route through a housing estate in the UK with broken glass and think what can we do to encourage people to not just make cycling a part of their daily life but a part of their recreation activities as well. Anyway, that's me banging on about cycling. I guess it's what I'm passionate about, so there we go. Anyway, I'm going to leave you with some more clips cycling through the countryside as I head towards Biberac. Hi there, so that's the cycling part of my day over and I'm staying in that hotel behind me which is called... Uh, Hotel Zuris, and that's in a place called Biberbach. I think that's the name of the town I'm in anyway. It all becomes a bit of a blur after a while when you've got a whole list of things you should be remembering. It all, yeah, it's difficult to remember where you are and what you're doing. Can you actually see my face? Let's take this off. Yeah, that might be helpful. So the cycling's over, but now I'm going to walk into Biberbach, which I assume is the name of the place, and I'm meeting a guide at the museum, and we're going to check out the museum and then I've got a uh, dinner and then it will be back to the hotel and ready for another day cycling. So the cycling today was pretty easy, it was just 50 kilometres I think and the weather was warm all day, um, that was about it really, we kind of passed through countryside and some quiet country lanes and that's all I've got to say, so I will catch you later, cheers for now. <laughs>